Hi everyone, it's Jennifer the Whistle Stop Stitcher and I am back again. It is episode number 46. Uh, today is Sunday, August 23rd, 2020. Um, and I have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Maybe not as much stitching to show as usual, but um, I still have a lot of exciting things to talk about. Um, so we're just gonna jump right in. We're not gonna delay at all. <laughs> um, but first of all, I wanna say a huge thank you to everyone that has come by and watched and commented. Uh, you guys are awesome and I so appreciate it. Um, and I have to say an especially big thank you um, to, to, to everyone for the absolutely phenomenal response to my new patterns that I released last time. Um, it's been a little bit of a crazy two weeks. It, I mean, the, the response was overwhelming and I cannot tell you thank you enough. It was completely unexpected and more than, more than I ever imagined. So I can't even, I can't even tell you how thankful I am to everybody who visited my Etsy shop and purchased my patterns. I mean, you guys, it's been insane and I really, truly, truly appreciate it. Um, so yeah, it's the, the sales started rolling in like within 10 minutes of my video going up, you know, two weeks ago and kind of haven't stopped since. And so it's been awesome. Um, I really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, and so because there was such a positive response and, and, um, it, everything, you know, seemed to go over so well, um, I've been hard at work working on more patterns. So today I have the next set to show you. And by the time this video is uploaded and posted, the PDFs should be in my Etsy shop. Um, if for some reason you go there and they are not, it might be because it's just taking me a little bit longer than expected to get the PDFs ready. So if they're not there right after the video is uploaded, they should be there within a few hours or by tomorrow at the latest. Um, I've got, you know, the charts ready. I've got the pictures taken and all that stuff. I just got to put the final PDF pages together and upload them essentially. So I'm going to do that while my video is uploading. So, um, so stay tuned for that in the next couple of minutes, I will show you the next set of patterns, but first I just had to tell everyone how much I appreciate all of the support. It means a lot. And, um, yeah, so it's been amazing. Um, and so for those of you that may not have watched last time, um, my Etsy shop is called Whistle Stop Stitcher and there is a link to it in the description box below. And if you go over there to visit, you can get my uh, first triplets set of patterns, uh, which I've got, actually I still have them sitting here. Um, there's these three. So there's the pumpkin and the ghost. And the last one is the cat. So those are the first three patterns that um, are already up there and um, they're still there and they will remain there as long as people want to keep buying them. So um, yes, so first things first, I'll get this out of the way before we continue on. So in my last video, I said at the end that I was going to give away a set of all three of those PDF charts. Um, and so I'm going to announce the winner here quickly. Um, and so I have already put the, my video and the word and everything into the YouTube random comment picker. And I hit the little shuffler button and the winner of the, um, Halloween triplets PDF patterns is Kathy Carey. Kathy Carey. You are the winner. Congratulations. Um, so she said, Stephanie at Lindy Stitches has a video on how to separate and sew on the mini palms. It is great as all of hers are. I agree. Stephanie has absolutely fabulous videos, but be careful. Pom poms other than the lady dot creates, you can't separate the palms from the strip. She makes hers so you can. 
I would like to stitch the triplets. Thank you. Yes, Kathy, thank you for pointing that out. And after last week's video, I went and I looked at all my other pom-pom trim and all of them are stitched on in such a way that you're not going to be able to cut off that extra piece. So you'll just have to stitch that part on, or you can try to stick it in between the layers and catch it in there when you sew your pillows together. But, um, just maybe another reason to purchase the lady.creates um, pom-pom trim because you can separate that edge and get a nice neat finish for your trim but kathy you are the winner so please uh, send me an email whistlestopstitcher at gmail.com and uh, as soon as you send me that email i will reply back to your email and send you the pdf files for those three patterns so please make sure you uh, send me an email as soon as possible and i will get those out to you um Stick around to the end of this video. I'll do another giveaway. So, but you gotta stick around to the end for that one. Um, okay, so what else? Um, so like I said, amazing response to the patterns. Awesome, so amazing. Um, there's a few other things also in the works that I can't really talk about just yet, but you might see my pattern some other places sometime soon, which is crazy and awesome. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, and then I also was contacted by a retailer who would like to sell my patterns, but I don't really have a way to print and distribute them at the moment. And so they put me into contact with a company that handles the printing and distribution for you. So essentially I provide them with my digital files and then they, if retailers want to purchase, they can contact them and order however many copies and then they print and pack and ship and do everything for you. So I have made an inquiry to see about getting that set up because there's folks who have asked me uh, to do that because they want to carry physical copies of my pattern. So awesome, very awesome, amazing. So. I'm seeing what I can do about that. Um, so, um, so that's crazy. And, um, so I've been just working on a bunch of other stuff I, before I even put those ones out. I already had two or three more sets of those triplet patterns designed and ready, as well as a bunch of other <laughs> things and different styles of stuff. Um, and since the last video, I've come up with even more. And honestly, at this, I don't know. I mean, I just have to all of a sudden seem to have a bunch of ideas, which is, and it's a lot of fun. It's good downtime activity at the end of the day or when I'm just sitting in, in the evening watching TV or whatever. Um, and the limitation is honestly how fa fast I can stitch them. Uh, because I don't want to put the patterns out without stitching up the models. Um, because I've already noticed for the couple of ones that I've stitched up so far that I've changed colors um, as I started stitching because they didn't look the way I thought they would. I've added stitches or taken things away or, you know, modified things as I was going. Um, so I really need to stitch the models first to make sure the pattern looks okay before I put it out there for sale. And I think it also helps to have like a cute picture of the finished <laughs> cross stitch that, you know, so you can actually see what it's going to look like when it's done. Um, so really it's just the limit is how much time I have to stitch and how fast I can stitch. And I will tell you, this is embarrassing and shows my age as well. I honestly think I've caused like a carpal tunnel flare up <laughs> because of how much I've been, I've been stitching so much over the last couple of weeks to try to get these little patterns ready that my arm, my wrist are just, they're so sore, they're aching. And so I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to injure myself. It's not worth hurting myself. <laughs> um, so I'm just having to be careful. And then I did something like two days ago and I somehow, my shoulder now is sore and killing me. I don't think that's a crafting related injury, but it doesn't help that like my whole entire right arm and I'm right-handed are just killing me. So, um, so that's slowing me down as well. But um, I guess I could go about trying to get some model stitchers, but I don't actually know how that works and I don't know how to go about doing that. So I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm also a little bit worried given what I just said about how I have had to change, um, 
I've had to change like stitches and colors and things as I go and so I just I'm afraid that I won't you know, if I send it off and someone starts stitching it and then it's going to come back and be like that's not exactly what I wanted whereas if I stitch it myself I can make those changes on the fly and then it comes out exactly the way I want so we'll see we'll figure it out so for now we're going to be limited by how fast I can stitch and given that I have a full-time job that is very demanding and a family and my two children are starting school back up tomorrow uh you know stitching time is somewhat limited so we'll do the best we can and so i just realized that before i started filming i forgot to clear my memory card in my new camera which means i have a limited amount of space to record this video before it's going to run out so I'm gonna make it quick. So I'm guessing this is not gonna be another one of these epic hour long <laughs> floss tubes because otherwise I'm gonna run out of memory on the camera, but that's okay. Um, all right, so let's get into it. I will show you the next set because, so normally in my videos, I go through and I talk about my um, FFOs and then any FOs and then any whips and then haul and then plans or life stuff or whatever. So following that theme, I will show you my new my three FFOs, which are my three new triplets. Um, and these ones are Christmas. And sorry, a piece of ice came out in my mouth. And so these are triplet Christmas triplets. And I'm gonna make sure I don't get that that light doesn't I don't want it to be too bright. So I'm going to show you. These are the colors for the Christmas triplets right here. They take only one, two, three, four, five, six colors of DMC. And once again, one skein of each color is enough. If you stitch two over two on 32 count, it, one skein of each color is enough to stitch all three designs. So I started with a brand new skein of each color and uh, I still obviously have some left of each one and I stitched all three designs with it and I made a lot of mistakes and I ripped out a lot and one of them I started and like stitched the whole border and then realized I didn't have enough <laughs> fabric around it to finish it so I had to rip and <laughs> stitch it in a different place so anyway there plenty of uh, DMC in one skein to stitch all three even with a couple of boo-boos if you mess up so dun 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 I am going to show these to you and I think they're really cute and um, I will say I wanted these to be a little different than like I guess normal Christmas designs you see I mean I, I mean there's only so many things you can do when it comes to Christmas right so there's Santa and reindeer and elves and Christmas trees and you know all the red green and white and all that kind of stuff so um, I mean it's Christmas but I wanted to I tried to think of like what are some motifs or things that we maybe haven't seen as often um, and so that's what I came with so I decided to sort of focus on Christmas greenery <laughs> you know um, and so that is what I came up with and so I'm gonna try to hold all three of these up at the same time so you can see them and I know it's hard to see so I'm gonna have to show each one individually but I'm very excited so this is the first one and it is called Merry Christmas and it has some holly like berries and leaves Um, these are stitched on 32 count brash linen by picture this plus two over two and then I um, added some red fabric cotton fabric with this cute trim and then the back I love this fabric that's on the back of these pillows look at that isn't that cute and then these are just stuffed with polyfill so there's the first one Merry Christmas second one and this one is my favorite it's holly jolly and it's got a holly wreath on it and 
And then the third one is Tis the Season, and it's got some poinsettia flowers. So, and they all three have the same fabric on the back. And you know what's really sad? Every single thing in these pillows, I just had in my stash. I had in my stash before I ever even thought of the idea of putting together some Christmas patterns. I had Christmas fabric. I have red fabric. I have trim. I have all the linen. I have the DMC. So this is my, um, this is what I call justifying my craft hoard because no matter what it is that I might need, I have it. So during this whole pandemic and being stuck at home and things are harder to get, it's been okay for the most part because I've got almost everything I need. So here they are, all three. I love them. I love them on this fabric. I wanted to choose like a little bit of a different kind of neutral. I mean, I looked at just some, you know, cream colored or natural colored linens or you know, I thought about like legacy or sand or, you know, pick one of those pictures of this plus like a, you know, vintage country mocha or something. But I really like this darker color of the brash linen and I wanted to use it. So there they are. I love them. And I just think they're so cute. I love the colors. This one is just absolutely my favorite. I just love that one so much. Um, and so you'll notice all of these triplet patterns will have the same border, like the Halloween ones as well. They all have that same border. They're the same size. They're all 63 by 63. So every triplet pattern that you'll ever get is gonna be 63 by 63, and they'll all have that same border, just in different colors with, you know, whatever the matches the design. And then I've been um, creating some different alphabets, you know, a little bit different too, for each one. So, I'm so excited. So I don't, I don't have printed out copies of the PDF patterns because I haven't finished them yet, um, but they will be ready here in the next hour or so. And I will upload them to Etsy so that they are there and waiting for you if you are interested. But same as the Halloween ones, um, each, you can get each pattern individually for three bucks each. Or if you buy all three, you'll save a dollar. You can get the whole set for $8, which I think is extremely reasonable for these little patterns. So maybe that'll be my thumbnail from YouTube. So I love these. I love, love, love them. So Christmas, if you buy them now, you can get started and you can have them finished before Christmas time. I stitched all three of these since my last video. I started the first one either later that night or the next day. Um, and I actually finished the last one, which was this one last night. Uh, and I did not stitch every day. And on most days, if I stitched, I stitched for maybe an hour or so. So these are honestly very quick. Like if you sit down for a good couple hour stitching session, you could probably get each of these done in like a, two days. You know, they're, they don't take long at all. So um, there you go. Um, also, uh, it, let me know if you are interested in, in like a finishing tutorial. I know, I'm, I think I mentioned this last time with the Halloween ones as well, but if you would like me to do maybe some, like a video on like creating this kind of a pillow with like the trim and stuff, let me know and I will see if I can put something together. Um, so Halloween triplets still in the, sh in the shop, Christmas triplets now available. Go and get your patterns. Um, and yes, I will be um, very excited to share more of those with you coming soon. Um, I already have the next two sets ready to go and I've even got the fabric picked out and the flosses, which I do believe are right here. And I will give you a quick sneak peek and show you those. So, Here we go. All right, so next one. Uh oh. Something fell. Oh, there we go. Okay, never mind. 
So the next set is going to be stitched on this 32 count XJU Design Linen in Brown paper and with these DMCs. So there's the linen. Whoopsie. There's the DMCs. There you go. And so that's the one. And then the next set, I'm still making one or two final uh, color choices in terms of the floss. So these might change a little bit, but generally speaking, they will be something like this. Something like similar to this. That is Water Lily Linen from, I think, Zweigert. And those are the colors of DMC. So that's the next set after the other one. Again, as fast as my little hands can stitch. So there's that. Um, and I actually have at least one or two others that I'm also, that are almost ready that will come later. Um, so, so that's that. Um, I also have one other design of my own that is currently underway. And so now since we're kind of moving into the whip section, I'm actually going to give you a sneak peek and I am going to show you this. I have stitched literally like this much. So you're not going to, you're not going to see a whole lot, but, um, I'm going to show it to you anyway. Let me put something behind it so that that helps. So sneak peek here, folks. I think you know what it is. This is Weeks Dye Works Confederate Gray. And that is Weeks Dye Works Coal. And this is something else that you will soon see if as soon as I can stitch it up. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how fast I can go. So that's a sneaky peeky of that. Oopsie, I just dropped something. So that's uh, coming soon. I really should probably stitch that one first, which I might before I stitch any more of these triplet ones, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so that was a sneak peek. So I have one other whip that I worked on in the last two weeks. See, that's also the problem is if I'm spending all my time like model stitching these designs, then I don't have any time to stitch on anything else, which I really, I mean, I still have all these millions of projects, so I've got to find something else some other time too. So I don't think I'm going to be able to put a pattern out every two weeks because then I would only spend my time <laughs> stitching on that stuff. And I do want to stitch other stuff too. So, um, okay. So the other, I started a new project and it is the Scarlet House. I see red. And I am stitching this with Um, you know what? It would be helpful if I could remember which one of these glosses I chose to use. Okay, it's this one. I'm like so confused. <laughs> this is 36 count picture. This plus Tyco is the name of the fabric. And I'm stitching it with one strand over two using color and cotton Dracula. This is awesome. I love this color red. It's like very variegated red. And this is a nice creamy kind of linen. Let me 
situate it here a little bit. So that's what I got so far. I love it. It's really pretty. So I'm going to need to continue on with that. I'm kind of obsessed with the red samplers right now. I told you that last, last time. Um, the other one I want to start and I also have in this same bag is this one. Misty Purcell Luminous Fiber Arts Gathering Berries. And I've got um, a whole bunch of different red choices in here in addition to that one that I was looking at. So got all these. I think for the gathering berries, I might use this one, which is Romy's Creations in Garnet. Or this one, which is Color and Cotton in Valor, which is a nice bright red. So one of those two. You can tell me in the comments which one you think I should choose. <laughs> so those are my choices for that one. But in the meantime, I see red and I need to get back to working on it. So those are my two whips. That's all I stitched on. Um, actually just one whip and then those other ones that I finished. Um, I do, I haven't made any more progress on this, but I'm going to share it because this was for the, um, Stitcher's Coven Halloween swap and it's due to be mailed by like September 11th or 12th and I need to finish it. So this is the Sub Rosa Designs Witches Dance. And so I need to finish it for my stitching swap partner. Uh oh. I was like, where'd the needle go? There it is. Um, so. I'm getting close. I just need to finish it. So this is actually the next thing I need to work on. I am not going to allow myself to work on any other of my projects until I finish that. So. And that is on Exju Design Linen in Dark Desert, which is the most beautiful color. So that's on the list for like probably today when I'm done with this video. I, and I'm done with my PDFs. I've got to work on that. I've got to get that done. Um, okay. What else? Next haul. I did buy a few things because I'm me and I can't not buy things because I just always feel the need to buy things. Um, because apparently I think I have unlimited stitching time, which I do not absolutely, but you know, whatever. Okay. So I placed another order with Abby top knot stitcher. She just has so many good things in her shop that I, you know, I feel compelled to buy stuff. Um, <laughs> so I mentioned last time <coughs> that I had pre-ordered the Tiny Modernist Stitch Goddess pattern. Um, and so I'd gotten the rest of my order and then that one wasn't in yet. So she was going to send it later. And then she was like, I've got your pattern and I'm going to send it out today. But if you want to order anything else, I can just throw it in and ship it all together. So I was like okay why not so i went ahead and ordered a few other things so but this first is this this is amazing like i don't this is amazing i love this so much so much i really really want to stitch this like soon it's so cute it's stitched on um dwarf by picture this plus crystal dwarf. I'm sure I've got blue fabric that would look good like this. So that is adorable and I love it. And so when I was getting that, I figured why not throw some other stuff into my cart. So I also got Haunted by Misty Purcell, Luminous Fiber Arts. 
because it is so cute. Oh my gosh, you guys. I mean, really, it's adorable. I love every single thing about this. Everything. Like, I can't even tell you. It's freaking adorable. Misty, I love it. <laughs> so I got that, and then Abby had gotten back in stock Quaker Pumpkins by Hello from Liz Matthews, which I'm obsessed with this pattern. And I need to stitch it. I know Julie already started it because she's crazy like that. And hers is looking amazing. And I really need to do this. I need to see if I have the called for. I'm looking at them and I don't recognize some of those names. So I don't think I do. But I want to stitch it exactly like it is. So I need to get those called for flosses. I think I've got, I've got fabric I'm sure that I can use. <coughs> but I need this in my life. Amazing. Again, I love pretty much every single thing Liz Matthews puts out. So Liz, if you make them. I'll just buy them. Just keep it up. Um, and then the other thing I bought was some needle minders, which I stitch in hand. I don't use a Q-snap or a frame or anything like that. I mean, I have them and I used to use them, but I don't use them anymore. I stitch in hand because I find that I can stitch faster. And given that I have limited amounts of time and lots of stitching I want to do, I need to stitch as fast as possible. So why do I need needle minders? I don't, I don't use them. I have a tray full of them that I never use because I stitch in hand. But she had some of the most amazing needle minders and I could not not buy them. So I'm gonna figure out a way to use these because they're just, they're so cute. So here they are. I got one, two, three, four, five of them. So here's this like death's head moth, which I just love so much. And I got that pattern that I showed a few weeks ago that was the moth like this. So I bought that. I was like, oh, I'll use it when I stitch that. And then a spool of thread because, you know, of course. And then this cute bird. He's got a crown. And then an Alice in Wonderland playing card. She's sitting in the chair reading and it's so cute. And then this crypt one, which is amazing. I'm just worried that I'm gonna break off those little pieces at the top because they're skinny. But oh my God, I couldn't resist those. They are so cool. So I've added those to my needle minder collection. So there's that. That's, that was pretty much it for my haul. The only other thing, well, two other things I'll show you. Um, one is I went to Joanne yesterday with my sister and I bought, I went to buy one skein of DMC. I was missing one color that I need for one of my upcoming designs. And I looked through all of my DMC. I looked through every single project bag, all of my kitted up projects everywhere. And I cannot find this color of DMC. It's DMC 931. If anyone knows where I can get DMC 931, tell me. Because I can't find it anywhere. Um, well, I couldn't find it at my local Joann's. So I went to buy one skein of 931. They didn't have it. They haven't restocked their DMC in months. Same empty slots every time. So they're, they're never gonna get it. So I just gave up. But then I was like, well, it's a blue color. I was like, let me just grab a skein of like every other DMC blue and I'll just see if I can use a different blue instead. So I picked out like every DMC blue floss that they had. And then they have all of these like color variations and they're like all these really cute variegated ones and I have a whole series of these like monochromatic sampler type patterns that I've been designing and I was like, well, some of those might look good in these like, you know, slightly variegated, you know, kind of monochromatic DMC color variations things. And so I was like, eh, just get like two skeins of every one they have so that I can play with them and try them out and see what might work. 
So, oh my god, there's just floss flying everywhere. Anyway, so I just, like, bought two of every single one of these, like, variegated, like, DMC color variations so that I could try them. Because I needed more floss, right? Like, I don't have an entire storage unit full of them. But I did get all the blues so that I could try those and maybe find the elusive perfect blue that will replace the DMC 931 that I went to get and I can't get. <laughs> so, so that was a little bit more haul. And then one other thing. I don't remember if I had this last time in my last video or not. I don't know. Did I show you guys this? I got this quilting magazine. I don't know if I had it last time or not, but um, I love this cover quilt with the pumpkins. I really want to make that. So I bought this magazine. And actually this magazine has a ton, ton, a ton, a ton of super cute quilt patterns in it. And like, you know, when I buy quilt magazines, usually there's like, you know, one or two that are like, oh yeah, I like that. This one actually had like four or five. I love this one too. Look at that. It's like scrappy. So anyway, there's a ton of really cute quilt patterns in this magazine. Actually, I was pretty surprised. Um, so I think I want to make the pumpkin one someday in all of my infinite free time. I love this one too. Look at that. So, look at how cute that is. Anyway, so there's that. I got that magazine. Um, I'm just looking at my timer counting down how much time I've got left. <laughs> it says I've got 12 minutes. Um, what else? What else? What else? Is there anything else? Um, I don't think so. So, um plans. I'm going to finish stitching that sub rosa, which is dance for my swap partner. And so I should, I'm going to commit right now that by my next video, I'm going to have that completely done and fully finished so I can show it fully finished before I then have to mail it off. So that I'm, I'm making that promise right now. So you can all hold me to it. Um, and then I want to also, I need to work on that icy red. I need to start working on the next set of triplets. And I need to work on that other one that I gave you the sneak peek of. Lots and lots of things to do. I'm not sure how much project progress I will make. Um, I did not get started on my giant red sampler yet. I did not get started on pandemic yet. I totally forgot when I mentioned last time, I think it was, or the time before the, the pandemic and I showed you the silks for you that I wanted to use for it. I totally forgot that I had actually ordered some other silk that I thought I might want to use for pandemic. Um, I made an order from Be Stitch Me Fabrics and so she makes hand dyed fabrics. Um, and then she also has hand dyed silk. Um, and so I ordered like three or four different fabrics to try. Um, and then I also ordered this beautiful, like deep purple variegated silk, like a, a hank of it that would be enough to do like pandemic. Um, and I haven't gotten any of that yet. You know, it takes a while for her to die. So, um, whenever I do get it, I, so I have to hold off on starting pandemic until I get that. So I can look at it and make sure that I know whether I want to use the silks for you or whether I want to use the other purple silk that I ordered. So that will have to wait a little bit longer. Um, also, I have to say that I am an, I am an epic failure at stitch alongs. So I have my very own stitch along, the, um, a most noble pursuit Sal that I am doing with Cindy and Tracy, and both of them have made more progress than me. I think both of them have finished the first block and have moved on to the other ones. I've done like this much of the first block and then I gave up and then I've gotten distracted by other things. So I'm a Sal, I'm what I am, what I am calling myself a Sal failure. 
that's okay. I've also failed at Jane Fittis because I got so mad when that stupid border kept messing up and I had to keep ripping it out that I just put it away and I haven't worked on it again. And so my intention of actually keeping up with that one because it seemed like it was doable that you know one section per month I'm now behind and so I failed at that one um, I was doing the United We Stand you know Teresa Kogut chart and I worked on it for like two days and then I stopped the uh, stitching with the sister release SWTS United hashtag I so I failed at that one because I haven't worked on that one either. Um, I know there's others. I'm just a giant failure at Sal's. I need to do like, um, who was it that said they were going to call it a start along instead of a stitch along. And that's the way I'm going to look at it. I will start along with everybody else and then I will quickly fail and forget to keep up. But Oh, well, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't know why I do that. Uh, there's just too many projects and too many distractions. Um, okay, so what else? So I'm a, I, I failed at Sal's. Um, I have lots of fun projects, but, you know, can only stitch so fast. Um, I think that's probably it. Um, in personal news, this last... I don't know where did I put there it is okay um uh today's Sunday on Friday the family and I we I took the day off from work and we drove to Nashville and we bought an RV <laughs> so we uh, have realized we've we've always wanted one I went camping my entire childhood. My parents had a camper before I was even born. There's pictures of me in diapers in the desert camping. We camped my entire life. We always had like a travel trailer and then we had a motorhome and we would go camp out in the desert and we would take cross country trips in the motorhome and like saw the entire country. And so always been camping, traveling, tons and tons of fun. Um, and then when Kevin and I started dating, like when I was in college, Kevin would come with us on our trips and like we'd go camping and Kevin would come too. Uh, and he always, it was fun. Um, and then once we got married and you know, I didn't go camping with my parents anymore. Um, we kind of stopped doing that and then now we live across the country and so we haven't camped in a while but we have always 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 wanted to get like a trailer um, and we've been looking for years and it just never quite worked out my husband even had bought a giant truck um, right around the time when my daughter was born he had this like Ford F450 he bought to tow a trailer and then we never got one and then he still got rid of it and then got a different truck which we can still use to tow um, so finally we were like, you know what? I am going to be teleworking through at least the end of the year. And in all honesty, probably longer. Um, my kids are doing distance learning. School starts tomorrow, they're fully remote and we had to commit to the entire semester, which goes through December. So the next semester at the earliest starts in January. So through at least the end of the year, we are all remote. And my husband, you know, stay at home dad, takes care of the whistle stop business. So he's not tied down to anything. And the whistle stop business is sp still slow. Like we, we had our very first guest this last week and we have our very first retreat of the year coming in this week. Um, and we've had multiple other retreats for the fall that have canceled. And so honestly, we're only gonna have probably two or three groups that are gonna come in through the fall. Um, so we won't, we don't have to be here to do that. Um, we just have to make sure we're home in between when, when those folks are going to come stay with us. So we've realized, you know, we can, we can be anywhere. We do not have to be home in our house in order to right now. So we have been looking and it just so happened that the exact like fifth wheel trailer we were looking for, we found basically a brand new used one. Um, it was a, a family in Nashville that purchased it like two months ago and they intended to park it on a lot where they're building a new home so they could keep their eyes on the construction. And then their new neighborhood told them they're not allowed to have a trailer there. So the whole reason they bought it, they couldn't use it. So now it's just been sitting in storage and they need to get rid of it. So it's basically brand new. They used it one time and now they're getting rid of it and it was a great deal and it had all had everything we were looking for. So we went and looked at it on Friday, looked great. And so we purchased it. And so we have to go pick it up on Wednesday, uh, get it home and, 
you know, get everything all worked out. But the plan is that over the next couple of months, we are going to take some trips. Um, I can work from anywhere. The kids can work from anywhere. We just have to find campgrounds that have good cell service or that provide Wi-Fi <laughs> because um, we can remote in from wherever we are. So we're going to be going camping and so we'll you know maybe a couple of days at first and then a week or two and here and there and we'll probably start close by first and then maybe we'll go a little further i told my husband i don't care where we go i want to go to maine that's my favorite place we went on a trip to maine a few years ago and i absolutely loved it so did my husband and i'm like i don't care where else we go or what else we do but i want to go to maine so at some point i think we'll probably go to maine but um other than that who knows but that's very exciting. So we are going to be doing that soon. So we got to go pick it up on Wednesday. Um, other than that, work continues to be busy. It continues to be stressful, but that's okay. It's, it is what it is. Um, so the last thing that I'm going to mention is that, um, I am going to give away another set of patterns. So today I mentioned the Christmas, I showed the Christmas pattern. So I'm gonna give away a set of the Christmas patterns. So um, again, if you are interested in um, those patterns, please say, I, am, I would like to stitch Christmas. So I'm gonna search for the word Christmas um, in your comments for the next time. And I will give away uh, the PDF bundle of those patterns. So don't say giveaway, don't say free, make sure you're over 18, um, all that good stuff. Please make sure you are a subscriber. It would be really awesome if you would like the video um, and uh, just put the word Christmas somewhere in your comment and then you will be entered for a copy of those patterns. Um, so I will give those away next time. Um, otherwise, let me see, is there anything else? Um, so real quickly before I go, I do want to, um, just mention a couple of floss tubers that I have been watching and enjoying. Um, I just feel like there's so many, there's just so many good floss tube channels right now. You guys, there's so many awesome, um, people out there to watch. Um, and so, I mean, obviously there's, you know, the, there's lots of them that I've mentioned before. So I, you know, Julie, Kansas City girl in a Colorado world. She just put out a new video. She is awesome and amazing and everybody should be watching her. Um, Diana at It Is Kismet Stitches is awesome and amazing. Emily C, Eclectic Possessions, always has such beautiful stuff in her videos. Brenda and Laura, uh, Brenda and the Serial Starter. I like eagerly await their videos every two weeks because they just show the most beautiful stuff. I just, I love their videos so much. Um, obviously Carol, the salt box stitcher, um, Pam and Steph just keep stitching. So, um, I mean, there's a million others and I know I'm forgetting people, so I apologize. But, um, so those are kind of the ones I've already mentioned, but there's been a few new ones that I've found recently that I've really enjoyed watching. Um, and so, uh, Annie, Joy-filled stitcher. I love her videos. I love watching her. She puts one out every week and she's just so sweet and so fun to watch. And I just so enjoy her videos. Um, so go check her out and I will try to remember to link all these people below. Um, Erin, the two martini stitcher. Absolutely love her. I also eagerly await her videos every week. She's got so many like awesome projects and I really love them. Um, Elizabeth Can Stitch is a new one and I've really enjoyed her videos. She's got a lot of really pretty like samplers and different things that she has been stitching. And so she's got a couple of videos out so far. So she's great. Um, obviously I've been watching Kim over at Barbara's Daughter. She's awesome as well and has like so many, so many beautiful things that she's stitched. And she showed my patterns in her last video. So thank you, Kim. I appreciate that. Um, who else is out there? Um, gosh, there's so many. I've been Carla Rolodex Stitcher. I've been watching her. Um, Lolly, Lollipop Stitches. Who else? Shiloh Stitch M X Stitch MD, I think it is. Um, Abby Top Knot Stitcher. Um, who else? 
Oh gosh, you guys, there's just so many. Um, Jan, oh, well, I mentioned her before, but I, Jan, Jan Hicks creates. I've been watching her videos lately. Um, obviously Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, I, I know I'm forgetting. There's just so many of them out there, but I thought I would go ahead and just try to run through a quick list of all the ones that I've been watching lately. I have been watching a lot of floss tube lately. Um, whenever I do have a chance to sit down and stitch, I put on floss tube and I sit and enjoy. So, um, thank you to everyone that's making videos, but, um, my phone or my camera says I have one minute left, so I have to hurry up and sign off before I run out of memory space. <laughs> so, um, everything I talked about should be linked down below. Um, also my Instagram handle, um, the whistle stop, all of their information, everything linked down below the, uh, hopefully I'll have all the floss tubers that I mentioned, my Etsy shop, all of that, everything linked down below. Um, otherwise I will plan to be back in two weeks. Um, hopefully with maybe another pattern to put out there or maybe just some stitching progress. Um, but either way, I will plan to be back in two weeks. Thank you again to everyone who has been watching. I, um, I really appreciate it. You can't, I can't even tell you how much it means to me. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope everyone has a great week or two of stitching. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye.